Jehovah Roy or Jehovah Ra'a. Jehovah Roy. Rohi, Ro, Roy, Ra'a. Uh, as I was studying this, I ran across something. Have you ever done this? When you studied the Bible, you ran across something you've never seen before. Well, this week I ran across something I've never seen before. And it opened this up to me in a way that I have never seen it. Now, I've looked at the Lord as my shepherd many times. And I know many of us have memorized Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But Jehovah Roy, the first time that it is in the Bible, means the God who sees me. And lives, the God who lives and sees me. That's a, that's a different input, isn't it? Ra'ah is derived from Rohi or Rohi. And the word Rohi in, in the Hebrew means my watcher. We're familiar with Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There's much that we know and love about the shepherd of our lives. Thank God that we have a shepherd, one who's watching over us. Amen. The good news is he faithfully watches over our lives. Thank you, Jesus. That doesn't mean we don't go and do some stupid things. That's true. I shouldn't have said stupid. Some <laughs> things that are not very thoughtful. And we get ourselves in trouble, but the Lord is watching over us. We have one who's watching over our lives. Thank you, Jesus. So the first mention of Jehovah Roy is in Genesis chapter 16. Genesis 16 and verse 13. Sarah's handmaid, Hagar, had been treated harshly and she fled into the wilderness. And we have this in the New King James and the CEV. In the New King James, it says, Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees. For she said, I have also, have I also here seen him who sees me? Have I also seen him who sees me? In the CEV, it says, Have I really seen God and lived to tell about it? <laughs> so from then on, she called him the God who sees me, Jehovah Roy. <clears throat> Desperate and alone in the wilderness. She, I can only imagine, I, I, I think that most of us have at some time in our life gone through things that have brought us to feelings of desperation, being alone. Have you ever felt alone? Anybody? Have you ever felt like, I'm out here facing what I'm facing and there's nobody here. And it's good to know when you're out there alone in the wilderness, in your wilderness, that God can show up and God will reveal himself to you in a way that you will know the God who lives is watching me. I don't know if that does anything to your spirit, but it makes my spirit leap. The God who lives is watching me. Genesis 16 and verse 8. And he said, the angel of the Lord who appeared to her by the spring said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarah. Verse 9. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Verse 10. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be counted for multitude. Here's a woman who's outside of the covenant of promise. She's really, she really does not belong to the promise that God had made Abraham and Sarah. She's on the outside and yet being on the outside, have you ever felt like I really don't deserve anything? And God comes to you. The angel of the Lord appeared to her. Now, 
Some of you know, if you do not know, in the Old Testament, when you see the angel of the Lord, as we see in this verse, it is an, it is an incarnation, a pre-incarnate Christ who appears to her. So here is the pre-incarnate Christ appearing to her, and he says, you're important. Not only are you important, here's what I'm going to do. I will multiply, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that you shall not be counted for multitude. There are many times in our lives, now I can't speak for your particular situations. I know every one of us have a little bit different story to tell. But most of us have been through moments in time. Let me back up just a second, if you don't mind. One of those times that I was going through one of those things, I sought out, well, I really didn't seek him out. He sought me out. A pastor that was pastoring a very influential church. I always thought in my mind, this guy has never been through anything. I mean, that's just the way that he appeared like he was blessed and, you know, have you ever found people in your life that you look at them and you say, they've never been through anything in life. That's just the way I felt. It wasn't true. He came to me and he said, Dwayne, I want to talk to you in Noreen just a minute. And I want to encourage you. He said, there was a time I went through exactly what you're going through, and I just about fell to the floor. My mouth, I know, must have opened. I was aghast because I thought never in the world has anybody ever been through what I've been through. Have you ever felt like that? I'm the only one. There in her moment of desperation, the angel of the Lord appeared to Hagar and said, I know, I know you. I've been watching you. This really has got a hold of my spirit. That God is looking down upon your distress and your agony and your situation. And God says, I have been watching you. Verse 11. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. Verse 13. Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, Jehovah Roi. You are the God who sees. For she said, Have I also here seen him who sees me? Jehovah Roy literally means the God who lives and sees me. I want to impress you upon you this thought that the God who lives sees you in what you're going through, in your distresses, in your need, and in your blessings. Verse 14, it says, Therefore the well was called Be'er, Lahay Roy. It is the spring of water of the living one who sees me. In your distresses and in your afflictions, you need to know that we can find a spring of living water that refreshes our soul. It is a spring of the living one who sees us. Some of you in your wilderness experience right now with whatever it is you're going through, you need to know that there is a living God who sees you and he's ready to come to your distresses, ready to come to your situation, and he will minister to you at your point of need. Hagar found this place in the wilderness. She thought she was alone. And then the Lord appeared to her. The angel of the Lord came down and he revealed himself as Jehovah Roy, the God who lives, who sees me. So Jesus, the Christ, 
your Savior, revealed himself as Jehovah Roe, the Lord my shepherd, the Lord who lives, who's watching over my life. Glory to his name. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. In John 6 and verse 35, he said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and who, he who believes in me shall never thirst. He said, I am the light of the world. John 8 and verse 12. He said again, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. He called himself the door of the sheep. He said in verse 7 of John 10, most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. In verse 9, he said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Over and over in all of these situations, the Lord is revealing his intimate care over your life. Yes, he is. I want to impress on you this morning. Please hear the Spirit of God. If you don't hear me, hear the Spirit of God pointing out that Jesus is watching over your life. He has what it is that you are needing. He is able to supply your need. And He cares and He loves you deeply. Yes, He does. He was revealing Himself as the Lord I shepherd. The Lord our God is Jehovah Roe, the shepherd of our soul. Later, Isaac was out in a field meditating by the spring at Beer Lahai Roy. The spring that is the place where Hagar found God to be the God who watches me. He's out there meditating. His mother has died. He's been through a distressful time. Abraham's servant has gone to get a wife for him. And he's out in the field meditating. Have you ever been out in a field meditating? Maybe not literally, but you've been out. Your mind's just been going over things. You're just wondering, well, how is this going to work? Is anything going to turn around? And while he was there, he saw some camels coming and Rebecca, his wife was coming. <laughs> so here he is dwelling, waiting, if you're going to go through a moment in your life where you're wondering what's going to happen next, you need to find the spring, the spring of living water of the God who sees you, the God who is alive, the God who sees what you're going through. And in that moment, realize God has the answer that you're needing in your life. I always thought it was it's one of my favorite stories in the Bible, the story of Isaac and Rebecca. And it's one of those stories where uh, his when he meets Rebecca, the Bible tells us all of his sorrow left that he had experienced over the death of his mother. Throughout the Bible, there are many encounters of people who meet Jehovah Roe in chapter 48 of the book of Genesis. And Israel blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my father Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life to this day, the angel who has delivered me from all evil and harm. Wow. Does that ever add a lot to this? The God who has fed me all of my life. All every day of my life. Let me ask you a question. Can you can you? Take a minute and look back to your daily encounters in life. Can you see even in the worst moments of your life that God was there? God was the one that sustained me. It was God. If it would not have been for the Lord who was on my side, we would have been consumed. 
He is the angel of the Lord who has delivered us from harm, from evil. Every morning I try to, to remember to pray this. Most of the time it's not even an effort for me. But some mornings I, I have to really concentrate to keep this in my prayers. Lord, keep me from the evil and from the evil one. And the good news is, though I pray it, I know that I have the angel of the Lord who has delivered me. He has delivered me from the evil one. And he is the one that's going to continue ministering to me and keeping me from all harm and danger. He's that God. <clears throat> After Jacob had matured, he came to know and identify God as Jehovah, Jehovah Roe. If you follow his life, you will see that God was with him. Even when he left home, God was with him. When he was mistreated by his to-be father-in-law, God was with him. In every situation, God was with him. He shepherded his life. And you can see this. I, I want you to pause this morning. I, I'm going to ask you to do this. Pause in your life. Have one of those Selah minutes where you can stop and you can think, look how God has shepherded my life. Look what the Lord has done for me. He has been the one who has fed me. He has been the one who has protected me. I have reason to rejoice and shout with joy because my God has taken care of me. Hallelujah. Can you identify with Jehovah Roy this morning? He is the living one who's watching over me. Yes, hallelujah. The psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. When David identified God as Jehovah, his shepherd, Jehovah Ra'a. I don't know why the transition from Rohi to Raha. I, I, I tried to find the root for why it was changed. It, it seems to me that David is seeing something about God, not only that he is alive, but he is a personal shepherd of my life. And when I see David's experiences and, and what the Lord says about himself later, I see this gentle shepherd who watches over us. And even if we stray and if we go, uh, go into trouble, he is still tenderly watching over us. There seems to me to be an intimacy about Jehovah Ra'ah. I shall not want. Yes. You know, the sheep really do not have to walk, wander, worry, ponder. Will I be taken care of? Because he is Jehovah Ra, he takes care of me. Psalms 139 and verse 7 says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. And if I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest ocean, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. He is the God who is watching, who is taking care of you. Psalms chapter 3 and verse 2. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Verse 3, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Verse 4, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over verse six surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever david is saying the lord is watching over me the lord who lives is watching over me 
Hallelujah. You know, I'm not serving some idol that has no ability to see. I'm serving the living God who is watching over me. Glory to his name. In Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 24, it says, When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of the trouble from the wicked when it comes. It's going to come, but you don't have to be afraid. That's right. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. When you know Jehovah Roi, the God who lives, who is watching over you, you can face anything. Hear me, please. Even, even if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. Even if the enemy encamps all around you, you can say, this is the place where the Lord is going to cause a spring of refreshing for me. And I will not be destroyed here, but I will be renewed. Hallelujah. I want you to say it aloud with me. The God who lives and sees me is watching over me. Everybody together. The God who lives and sees me is watching over me. One more time. The God who lives and sees me is watching over me. Do you believe that? Yes. Proverbs 3 and verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to on your own understanding in all of your ways acknowledge him acknowledge him what does that mean i see that he's here yes. the god who is living is watching me yes, that's right. and he shall direct he shall shepherd your paths right. he is the shepherd of your soul he is watching when i Said the shepherd of your soul, something in me says more than that. He shepherds my life. He shepherds my family. He shepherds my finances. He shepherds my health. Hallelujah. Regardless of what the adversary may do to me. And this is good news. Please hear me. Even when bad things happen to you, the Lord your God is able to turn it around for good for you. That's the God that you are serving. See, he refreshes, he provides green pastures and still waters, and he restores your soul. Praise the Lord. Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He restores, he refreshes, he calms, he heals. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Once again, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Full heart confidence. Lean not to your own understanding. There's my problem. Do you have that problem? When I start going through things, I start trying to figure it out. What am I going to do? I don't have the answers for this. Sometimes I even will say, I don't have the strength for this. Maybe even, I don't have the resources for this. How am I going to make it? I'm in the wilderness and in the wilderness I can find a spring of refreshing when the Lord himself comes down and he says, I've been watching you. It makes me want to run and shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I have a personal God. You have a personal God who has got you in his microscope, telescope, which either one you want. I like microscope close. He's closer. But even if you're far away, he still sees you. That's right. 
His perspective has not changed. In fact, 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 9 says, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. I want to say it today with all of my heart. He is my God. He is my Savior. He is my shepherd. He is taking care of me. I, you need to start listening to the voice of the Lord. He's still with you and he's watching over you. He has not abandoned you. He has not forsaken you. He is with you right now. Even if you don't know it, you thought you were alone out there in the wilderness, but he said, here I am. I am here with you. Hallelujah. I'm taking care of you with whatever it is you're going through. In Jeremiah 31 and verse 3, he tells us, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's my shepherd. Yes, it is. God cares. Have you ever felt? I know it's really not a true feeling, but have you ever felt? Well, God really doesn't care about me. What I'm going through. If God cared, why would I go through this? Sometimes we get to that place in our lives because of the test, the trial, the difficulty, the wilderness, how other people have treated us, what Satan has done to us, what the adversary does. Somewhere inside of you, you have to say what David said. Psalms 23 and verse 4, I will not. Be afraid. I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Whatever you're facing. The banker of heaven and earth is watching you. The sovereign, almighty, all powerful God has his eyes upon you. The more I, I face in life, the more I realize how important this really is. The more that you are going to go through in life, the more you're going to value his care. There's a commercial on television where a woman's laying down at the bottom of a stair. She's fallen and she's crying out, help me. Sometimes we feel that way, don't we? I'm down here and there's nobody. The Lord says, I am Jehovah Roy. I am alive and I'm watching you. And not only does he watch us, he is the God who cares and has all of the resources that are available to minister to us at our need. I want us to go to the Lord in prayer today. These words have spoken to me and I hope that they have spoken to you as they have spoken to me. Just the new revelation to me that Jehovah Roy is Jehovah Ra'a. That the God who lives is my shepherd. He's personal. He cares. I had a picture many years ago of a father with a premature baby. And the baby was so small, the baby fit in the palm of the father's hands. I want you to see yourself in the hands of God that regardless of what you are facing, in spite of what has happened, he has not lost sight of you and you are in his personal care right now. Some of you in this room today need that touch and some of you just need to remind yourself, yes, God is watching me and he cares. I know some of you are going to face some things that are unforeseen, some difficulties. 
you never thought you would be going through. Has anybody in the room have, have the last few years brought up some things that you said, that would never happen to me? Well, here's the good news. He's Jehovah Rai. He's watching. Hallelujah. If this is you and God speaking to your heart, you need, have need. I don't want you to stand this morning unless you just need to. But I want you to be ministered to by the Spirit. I want to pray for you. Reach out with your spirit, with your faith. Let God touch you right now. Heavenly Father, I come in the name of Jesus. The Lord my shepherd heavenly father i know that your eyes are roaming throughout the earth to show yourself strong in the behalf of us who are looking to you with faith some of us in this room today we are needing a real touch from god we are needing encouragement we're facing tests and trials that we have never seen were coming Lord, we are going through situations and tests. Lord, some of us are facing physical. Some are, are facing spiritual. Some are under attack from, from forces on the outside. And some are un, under attack from forces that are on the inside. Lord God, and we pray that you would help each and every one of us come to our aid. Lord, I pray that with your rod and your staff, you will guide and comfort and protect us. Lord God, that you will be so close to us that, that even when the enemy comes, we will feel the, the safety and the protection of Almighty God. There are some in this room, Lord, today who are needing wisdom. Lord, I just pray that a, a flood of your presence, that the spring would be open for them, Lord, that the spring of your presence and of your, of your blessing would be open to them, that in their wilderness right now, they would feel and know that God is, is my God and he's here to help me with what I'm going through. Lord, help your people. I pray, Lord, that the everlasting arms of God would surround them. Lord, pick up your people and encourage them in the name of Jesus. Satan, you are defeated in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Victory is ours through Christ. Hallelujah. He is our Savior. Yes, Lord. He is our Deliverer. Yes, he is more powerful. And victory is coming in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you for it, Almighty God. Blessed be the name of the Lord.